8, and we're going to contrast what we looked at in the previous video on plant diseases in agriculture and now look at animal disease. So just like we did previously, we are going to assess some cause and effects of disease in agricultural production. Uh, which this time will focus on animal disease. Like we looked at in the past one, there's always a bit of a scale here for you to try and work your way through. So firstly, make sure that you've got a disease uh, of agricultural livestock that you can call on if you need to uh, write about it in an examination. If you can add a couple, so you can do some sort of a contrast or look at uh, different uh, important agricultural animals. That could be uh, an addition or a, or a higher level. And then of course being able to um, assess the impact not just on an individual that maybe contracts a disease, but on uh, entire populations, um, entire farms, in fact on perhaps even a national economic scale, is being able to use your information and, and pull it out into um, higher uh, orders because you're thinking then about uh, uh, national or global implications of disease, not just the effect on an individual. So in Australia, we're very fortunate that we live in an island. Uh, we live on an island. <laughs> and as a consequence of that, um, we are protected from um, the movement of a lot of pathogens across uh, boundaries. Because of course, pathogens don't care about national boundaries or uh, those sorts of artificial barriers that we can create. They just move um, through different populations. And so we have managed to avoid some of the really critical diseases like foot and mouth or the uh, bird flu variants. Um, just because we've been just a little bit more isolated, but also because of some very important biosecurity. And I'll talk about biosecurity um, in a moment. The fact that we are on an island and that we have been protected does not mean that we are pest or disease free. And certainly there have been and continue to be some pathogens that do affect our agricultural industry, uh, particularly livestock and poultry. And so they are definitely worth having a little bit of a look at to see exactly what the impact is um, and not only what the impact is on the individuals or an individual farm, um, but also at a broader context. One of the things that we do notice is that um, beef, for example, is one of our top 10 exports. We are a, a country that exports a lot of our products of mining but beef's right up there, it's, it's in the top 10. And so therefore, um, a disease which perhaps wiped out a portion of our uh, beef cattle could have a, not just a devastating effect on the individual farms and the farmers themselves, but even on our export markets. Not just uh, in the short term, in terms of maybe promised um, goods, but um, in terms of goodwill into the future. And this can affect the livelihoods of a large number of Australians who rely on agriculture for their livelihood. So one of the ways that we try and um, counter this is through biosecurity. Now, biosecurity has a lot of, um, I guess, a very broad definition, and it has implications as, as soon as you arrive in this country or if you leave this country and return right at the airport, there are quarantine uh, measures in place to identify any type of foodstuffs that you may be bringing in from um, other states as well as other countries uh, and to make sure that you declare all of those things in order to try and maintain our very good record that we do have in this area of disease, of infectious disease in particular. But it's also important for farmers to ensure that they are conscious of and maintain standards in relation to disinfection, particularly if there is a, uh, an identified infectious disease amongst their um, livestock. That may also involve signage. Um, usually the signage will be uh, prominent, especially if the outbreak is one that could potentially affect uh, other farms in the region. Another reason to maintain boundary fences and make sure that the uh, livestock are contained and that also involves checking for strays. It may involve things like restricting visitor movements and of course we've done this on an absolutely massive scale with COVID which is not a disease that has uh, affected our livestock but it is something that um, has shown exactly the impact of re restricting visitor movements. This is a disease that's affected the human populations and by restricting uh, visitor movements, by having shutdowns and isolations, we have been able to, uh, in this country in particular, uh, do a pretty good job at keeping the incidence of COVID at, at 
um, very low levels compared to, to most of, or many other countries around the world. The cleaning of machinery and ensuring that anything that is or has been in contact with potentially infected individuals um, gets thoroughly disinfected and cleaned. General good husbandry practices, which is, I guess, all of those aspects of caring for animals, not just about ensuring that they have good food, uh, good water, their general health, they're clean, um, they've tr been treated with any of the uh, important chemicals or, or pharmaceuticals that they need in order to ensure their good health, but it's even about um, thinking about the quality of the product that, that is going to be produced. Maybe wool, uh, beef, lamb, eggs, anything that is part of um, what is going to then, um, I guess, be more widely dispersed through the population. Now, um, farmers are always uh, needing to, not always, but uh, at times going to be needing to replenish stock, uh, perhaps look at particular breeding stock. And so purchasing from reliable sources and often quarantining new stock are two ways of helping to uh, ensure or ensure the ongoing um, health of the population and, and try and reduce uh, the risk of some pathogen being introduced into a, a herd or a flock. And being able to carry out regular inspections is another area in which farmers will try and make sure that they are maintaining the health of their animals. As with the plant diseases, this is really about case studies. And what you want to do is to have a look at um, at least one of these in particular. You can expand that to look at, say, something that affects cattle, something that affects sheep, and maybe even something that's more likely to affect goats. Um, just as comparisons of the types of diseases, are there diseases that can be common across all of these species um, barriers, uh, or are most of the pathogens that we see very specific to individual species? Um, so those are some of the interesting questions that can pop out of your research, uh, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, and we're not wanting you to uh, become qualified veterinary surgeons. Uh, all we want to do is just give you a little bit of an introduction into the area of agricultural uh, pest and disease. So I guess the bottom line then is why does animal health matter? And I've pretty much covered most of this and it's important that you uh, maybe have a look. This is a great website to go and explore to have a little bit of a look at some of the key um, factors that are associated with good health amongst our agricultural crops and livestock. Um, economically is uh, obviously one important one. Economics are part of not just um, how a family survives, but it's also um, one of the things that drives our economy. Um, it's very important that the quality of the food that we have um, is high. So we want high quality food. And we're becoming much more aware of the individual animals themselves. So we also want um, as much as possible high quality life. You would have seen lots of um, information and, and uh, protestation a lot of the time about uh, cage uh, uh, chickens versus free range. Uh, and these are the sorts of issues that do pop up from time to time. And they do have economic implications, but they also have, um, uh, I guess, animal rights implications as well. And, and uh, I guess more so than anything else, stressed animals that are producing lots of chemicals that are then going to infect their uh, muscle tissue are not going to be great for uh, human consumption. So there's a lot of factors that go into um, the health of agricultural livestock uh, and poultry, and certainly just something that we want you to have a little dip in uh, during class. Thanks for watching.